Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Marivox and in this video I will be completing Lil Sinzi's Justice for Cow Plant Shell Challenge. So I don't know if y'all have ever heard of a shell challenge or have ever completed one, but they are a creation by Lil Simsy. She will create the shell or exterior of a house. Occasionally she'll put down interior walls, but usually it's just the exterior walls. And the one rule with this challenge is that you cannot mess with the walls that she puts down. So don't touch the exterior walls in this case. You can put um, any kind of interior layout as long as it fits inside the walls because again cannot touch exterior walls and you can make pretty much any kind of build so I like building houses so mine is going to be a house build and I don't know if y'all saw her stream where she introduced this particular shell um, the justice for cow plant stream or video um, but she makes some really excellent points in that video there are a lot of really random objects in the sims 4 that can be named like your Roomba or the bicycle, which it's kind of weird if you think about it to name a bike. I get people naming cars, but a, a bike, that's, that's kind of weird. I don't know. If you do that, I'm sorry. I don't mean to judge, but I, I just think it's a, a little weird for your Sims to do anyway. But, you know, they don't have purpose other, those objects that I just named don't have purpose other than, you know, either taking your Sim places or cleaning your house. So why do they have the ability to be named? They don't have personalities really. They're not living things. Whereas the cow plant, both has personality, is a living thing. I mean, you can rename some of your, you can rename pets and you can rename, you know, your Sims. Why don't we have the ability to rename the cow plant? So Sims gurus, y'all need to figure out how to add that into the game. Um, and then back to this shell challenge, this particular challenge. Um, this is the second shell challenge I've done um, by little Simsy. Um, of course, because it's the second one, I've only done the ones with the extensive amount of diagonal walls. Why? Why are there so many diagonal walls? They they are really hard to put your roof on. And you saw me earlier putzing around with the roof, and I still am going to mess around with it later because it's not perfect. Um, it also makes it difficult to put in stairs. So I kind of figured out earlier where I wanted to put these stairs. This is the, the third time I actually did this particular build, trying to figure out exactly where I wanted everything to go. Um, so I did figure out that's where I wanted the stairs, but it makes it makes putting stairs in weird because stairs cannot be diagonal. They have to go horizontal or vertical. And then because the stairs have to be horizontal or vertical, if your upstairs is completely diagonal, it's going to make your upstairs floor plan really weird. So as you can see here, the, the roof is clipping in. For some reason, it, roofs don't like hallways, but they're okay with rooms. I don't know. So it's, this is just a weird thing that the the Sims does with its build mode. But I will say I love the Sims 4 build mode. It is the most easy to use. I went back and tried to do some builds in Sims 3 and oh wow, just I know uh, it's it's a lot harder to use. You can't, you know, click and drag with like the roofs or the you, you can't even pick up rooms and move them. So it's, it's a lot harder to use. Um, I do like the ability to click and drag roofs that each roof piece is its own thing, kind of like a wall would be. It just makes it a lot easier to use. Um, I'm also doing uh, something a little challenging for me. I have a lot of Sims 4 packs, but I decided to do this build only base game. So you're, you probably noticed that I clicked that base game filter. Um, and I did that because I wanted more people to be able to download this build. I don't want it to just be those people that have a lot of packs. So you're welcome, I guess. Um, I also really like when I'm doing the exterior to paint like stone or um, brick into those kind of extrusions in the build. Um, so if it's not like one blocky shape, I like if there's an extrusion to put brick or stone and I love stone. So stone is kind of my first choice. Brick is second if it doesn't work with the color, but I chose the stone first because I again, really like the stone and I went with this kind of blue gray exterior because I thought that went the stone really well. So it kind of ends up just being a blue suburban um, which is fine. I, I like making blue suburbans and I like making, you know, kind of craftsman style houses. Um, I also, with that front, I really like how that porch kind of wrapped around to the side. That's why I added that second staircase. I wanted to have the ability to, you know, go up on the side and, you know, go around and walk around it. Um, I thought that was really cool. And you can add a whole bunch of other kinds of furniture to it. I didn't in this video. I kind of regret that. I wanted to put a, uh, chest table out there, some other outdoor furniture, but I didn't do that. So if you end up downloading this 
build it is in the gallery so if you do want it um, it's in the gallery you can add your whatever kind of exterior or skill building activities outside I, I love having those extra porch spaces which is kind of why um, there are two balconies up top there's two reasons why I made those balconies again it's just extra space to you know put those random objects that you need for skill building and the shape was really weird and I felt like it wouldn't work with a roof so I you know didn't want to mess around with the roof there since the roof was already kind of complicated. Um, this kitchen, I really like how it turned out. Usually I do kind of like lighter tones, but that the brown of those cabinets and counters really matched with the floor and I thought that really worked well. And with my usual house builds, I really like doing a dark floor with a light wall and usually kind of a gray wall. I feel like gray is a good neutral color and you can kind of be a little bit more flexible with, um, you know, what kind of furniture you put down, what the colors are, kind of accents, paintings. It's not, it doesn't, it won't clash with much. Gray pretty much goes with everything, which I love. So this rug I chose here, I love that rug. And so it's, it's just clean. It's very clean looking. Um, now I usually use a, a bunch of different packs. Um, so like the, I, I usually get really colorful ones, but I kind of wanted to do more of a, a kind of a light clean look with this. Um, so I, as you'll probably notice, every, all the furniture's kind of light for the most part. I think I chose one bed that was kind of dark, but all the furniture's kind of light. All the rugs are kind of that neutral kind of cream and gray. Um, and I don't end up liking that couch. Everything in the house is kind of fancy. So I'm like, I'm not going to go with that cheap couch. I'm going to get, you know, a nice living room or family room set up so that they can, you know, watch this TV. And I didn't go with, um, an expensive TV. I don't know. I just... Why waste the money on an expensive TV when you can get that little small flat screen and, you know, bump it up a size and it looks like all the other, you know, all the other TVs, it's, it's whatever. So that's what I usually do with my builds. I just get the small TV and bump it up a size. Um, I do a little bit of editing with the office. I ended up cutting it out right here um, just because I, I, I changed around a lot of stuff and I didn't like how it looked and I didn't want it in the final build. So it didn't make sense to put it in the video. So I just edited it out. You guys didn't really need to see that. I, all I did for the final edit was add that wall there. I also putzed around with this carpet that I thought a long carpet that size would work, but I was like, nope, it's gotta be square. Cause it didn't fit with that, with that wall there. Cause there's a, there's a diagonal that kind of cut that corner weird. So went with a square. And so that's kind of an, it's an office, but it's also kind of a music room or an art room. So I like putting kind of skill building items in the office. It's just a good place to kind of fill up furniture, give yourself, you know, a place to, to work on several different things. So I use offices. I always have at least one office in the build and I use those for my skill rooms. Um, and I went with kind of, I like doing those stacked pictures. I think they go together and I like the frames. They, they just, they match. Um, and so I felt like I'm moving that landscape over by the bathroom would work really well. Um, this trick here I saw in little Simsy's video with how to put those flowers kind of in the middle. They're as close as I can get them by eyeballing it in the middle, but it works. So I'll probably be doing that in future builds. Um, she also had this trick with her countertops and the mirrors. She uses a full size mirror instead of one of those little ones. I've always used the little ones, but she uses a full size mirror and it kind of goes behind the counter, which is, you know, really more realistic if you think about it. And, and it looks really good. So I went with that kind of style for this particular bathroom. And I used the same counters um, in the bathroom as I did in the kitchen, just because I'd like things to kind of match and be cohesive. It, I think it's weird if you have a house and like you've got all these different counters or fixtures and they're they're different everywhere it doesn't feel like the house really goes together and it, and it should um so that is a full bathroom i always am going to add um unless i can't fit it but i'm if i can i'm gonna always put in a bathtub and a shower just because you know some sims may want to just have a bubble bath and just chill out and some may not have time for it so they gotta jump in the shower so i like to give that option for both now the bathroom upstairs and downstairs are the same size. So they're gonna be just about the same layout. I think I changed a little bit in the upstairs bathroom. Um, and for this room, I kind of went with like the subtle colors, very light blue. I did pick some darker blue curtains, which I feel like just helped the pop of color. It really needed that. Um, and I, I thought this canvas would be good. I think I still need something on that wall. I didn't like 
those because it had that weird shadow. But I like, I really like the pink and the turquoise there. So I ended up take, keeping those and taking that other canvas off. I probably still should have gone back and added something. But again, I was only using base game and base game doesn't have a whole lot in, in the way of good artwork. So there's just not a, a variety um, with enough color or enough of the right pattern or style. So I kind of just went with what I had and you know, that would work. So here I am, I'm actually fixing the roof. This is where my final roof kind of design is gonna come in, where I don't do those kind of like chopped off four corner ones. I went with the sloped one instead. Um, and that diagonal one doesn't end up working out. So I get rid of that too, which is good because you know, if it doesn't work, don't use it. That's kind of my motto. So anyway, um, I think I think I go back and work on the, the bedrooms now. And the this room, I I was originally thinking of it being a a teenage girl's room, but I couldn't fit a desk in, so I was like, you know what, whatever. I I wasn't using my parenthood pack or my tiny living pack, so could, didn't have those little desks that I could have fit in that corner where I put that mirror. So I didn't end up making it a teenage girl's room. I turned it into a little girl's room, which is why those decorations kind of start to be more colorful and fun rather than a little bit more serious because I feel like a teenage girl with, would have maybe that painting I had instead of the, the llama one. The llama one's kind of playful. So there's the unicorn. You got to have, if you're going to have a kid's room, you got to have one of those, you know, big stuffed animals. I think they really, they really kind of make the room playful. And I love how I did this kind of descending of those um, frames there. It kind of makes it kind of more of an artistic way to put the paintings on the wall, not kind of your your standard across the wall look. Um, and these curtains were, were kind of really frustrating to put on there. Um, so I thank, thank the Lord for the alt key is all I'm gonna say. I, I, when I discovered the alt key, um, it changed my entire process of building, it, it really did. Um, Cause I can put things exactly where I wanted them to go and it's just great. Um, so this room is little boy's room, it's, he's a toddler's room. I end up cutting off that corner. I probably cut off more than I really needed to, but if I had done the small triangle rather than that bigger triangle, I felt like it would have made still a weird shape, like even even weirder than it already is. So I I didn't want to make it like that. Um, so anyway, I just cut off that big, big, big triangle. Now the furniture in here kind of doesn't match completely, but it's a toddler's room. So I feel like that's okay. I did forget to put in a toddler toilet, which I'm beating myself up over. But, you know, it can, there's still space that can go in the bathroom. It could even go out in the hallway. So if you do end up downloading this, then, you know, you can add it then. Um, and I did put the sad clown. I thought, you know, sad clown, I think he was in The Sims 1 if your Sim was, you know, having a, a really, really bad day. Um, he would come up and make you some balloon animals and try to cheer you up, but he was always crying. So I always thought that was funny. Um, so I put him in the toddler's room and I mean, most toddlers probably wouldn't mind if it had been my sister. She's scared of clowns, so she wouldn't have liked staying in that room. Um, and again, I do the, the mirror trick here in the bathroom. Um, I like how those counters kind of snapped in there and you can see like the, the, the tile along the wall, but I really don't like those weird shadows. I think that came from the, uh, the roof that was there. Um, and each of my uh, bathrooms is going to have a rug in it just to kind of add, you know, the kind of, everybody's got a bath mat in their, in their bathroom. So the water doesn't pool puddle. So, you know, that's, that's kind of necessary. Um, I cut out all of the, you know, putting the plants in all the vegetation, the gardening stuff, um, only because I had issues with the foundation and it was just kind of getting things to snap and, and I was putting down a lot of very similar plants. And so I felt like y'all didn't really need to see that, but you know, I do show you where I put my path and I do have a path connecting those two staircases, which is good. Need that. Um, so I think right here is where I skip for right after this. And I jump back to the patio because, you know, you always have to have some outdoor space for your Sims to kind of, you know, hang out, eat, grill, um, play kids especially need to have some sort of something to play um, especially if you're doing the motor skills so I put a jungle gym back there um, but you have to have the trash can have you heard of those builds that you know forget the trash can there's the mailbox and you know this is pretty much it this is the the whole build so thank you for watching um, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video